Ito na yata yung isa sa mga tanong ng mga baguhan sa UX and UI design or web design career or yung mga gustong pumasok sa field na ito. Kailangan ba na marunong mag-code? Hey guys, if you're new to this channel, I'm Franz Escolastico. I am a UX and UI designer and a no-code developer here in the Philippines. So as a UX and UI designer, kailang ba talaga natin na matuto na mag-code or kasama dapat ba sa skill set yon para ma-hire tayo sa isang company or makapagawa tayo ng isang website or app? So, unang tanong is, required ba siya? So, may mga company kasi na naghahanap rin na marunong or may knowledge sa front-end development. Why? Kasi kung sa isang team ay merong developer, may front and back-end developer, of course, the benefit of knowing how to code is it can be helpful sa communication with them. And of course, kung gumagawa ka ng isang design, like say in Figma, so ma-organize mo yung layer ng yung design or yung frames and makapag-communicate ka with them na walang of course miscommunication kasi merong ibang designer na totally walang alam talaga sa pag-code and kapag may tinanong si developer ng isang gagawin like say sa design system or yung sa frames na ginagawa mo and you have no idea syempre dun minsan nagkakaroon ng miscommunication uh, with each other and meron rin ng mga company na wala silang Care. wala silang pake kung wala kung hindi ka marunong mag-code kasi ang important is magawa mo yung UI design mismo or yeah, UX and UI design kasi minsan magkaiba yung role ng isang UX designer and sa UI designer so mas gusto nila na mag-focus or mag-concentrate ka dun sa design and iba na yung gagawa nun. and if you're a web uh, designer and you're building a design na solo ka lang, makakapag-create ka ba talaga ng isang website or an app? So, the answer to that is definitely yes. Makakapag-build or makakapag-develop ka pa rin ng website gamit yung mga tinatawag na no-code to low-code tools. So, starting with if you want to learn more about coding. So, I'm not talking about na yung coding like yung mga C++, yung mga in-depth na ng mga pang back-end development na. So, uh, hindi tayo doon kasi medyo ibang topic na siya and ako hindi ko rin alam yon dahil we are more on the front end yung pinaka basic lang talaga kasi ako na no, nagsisimula ako talagang inaral ko talaga yung basic ng um, coding or yun nga yung structure like the HTML and CSS and some of the JavaScript kasi uh, for me alam ko na makakatulong talaga sa akin yung pag may knowledge ka dun, and especially if you're um going to be hired sa isang company, sa isang big companies na merong developers. Yun nga, like I, what I said earlier na talagang mas gaganda yung uh, communication mo with them and may explain mo talaga mabuti kasi meron ka knowledge behind the behind the design. But yun nga, hindi siya totally required. Mas importante pa rin na alam mo yung design principles and you're able to explain the reason behind your design. So here are the some of the links na you can learn how to code code for free. So number one is the free code camp. So jen ako nag-aral nung unang una ko talaga um, yung basic talaga. It's free and marami kang matututuan sa kanila I guess from the basic to the advanced. Number two is si Code Academy. Next is si Web Web Dev Learn. Then the next one is W3 Schools. Eh, marap. Kahit hanggang ngayon, parang siyang naging isang refer reference pa rin niya ng mga designer and also yung mga front-end developer. So, marami, kang, marami kasing um, links dyan, maraming um, tutorials na pwede mong uh, mapag-aralan and ma pwede kang mag-experiment. Then last is si Learn to Code. So, yun yung mga I think na promising websites na you can learn how to code and I know there are more websites that are free and medyo hindi na familiar sa iba and 
I know that there are some websites rin na it's more entertaining like parang game na siya. So yun yung uh, para mas ma-engage ka talaga sa mag-aral mag-coding. And meron of course, meron ring mga paid naman like yung Udemy and I think if I remember uh, kumuha rin ako dati ng isang course sa Udemy um, I think $12 before ni recommend ng friend ko and nakapagbuo talaga ako ng isang landing page through HTML and CSS and VS Code ang gamit kong tool doon so uh, minsan may ginagam- ginagamit ko pa rin yung VS Code kapag may binubuha akong ano, um, website sa Shopify so meron kasing leak, diba, iba yung language kasi ito, so liquid language yeah, but anyway, uh, another topic na yung Shopify na yon so medyo iba kasi siya sa mga other um, websites so what if guys, of course you are freelancer nakapag-design ka na ng isang website, or five pager and tinanong ni client sa iyo na okay friends i want to um, develop d- that design so hahanap pa siya ng developer so syempre mas gusto mo na ikaw na rin gumawa of course because of the the rate na rin di ba mas mataas kasi kapag ikaw na rin ng all in one ka di ba so ako for me ganun ang ginagawa ko ako na yung design and ako na yung develop pero wala akong totally na alam sa yung as in na talagang yung mga in-depth coding. So, yun yung mga tinatawag na yung mga no-code or low-code and the CMS. So, ano ba yung benefits ng learning or ng building your website sa mga no-code to low-code or yung mga CMS um, tools? So, for me, it's easier to learn. And kung sanay ka sa mga drag and drop builder, para sa rin yung mga websites na to. And kung mas visual person ka talaga, since you're a designer nga, ba? So, mas, mas, mas madali talagang uh, gumawa ng isang website compared sa magko-code ka. Pero guys, remember ha, kung mapapansin nyo lang sa Figma, ba? merong two panels, two side panels. One, yung nasa left side is our layer panel. The right side is our design panel. Kung i-convert mo yon or in the coder um, version, yung left side, which is the layer panel, is the HTML kasi doon natin kinoconstruct yung frames natin. And the other one, yung sa design panel, yun yung CSS. Diba? So going back, so I guess the number one no code tool or no code website is ano pa ba? Webflow, di ba? So Webflow na kagamit narin ako before nito. Although minsan tricky yung pricing nila, kasi merong parang uh, may mga starter plan, uh, basic plan, mga ganon. And kukuha ka pa ng other another plan para dun kung may CMS. CMS is parang yung for like say may blog ka or e-commerce, ganyan. So, may separate payment siya. And the cons of it is, of course, medyo pricey siya compared dun sa uh, CMS like yung WordPress and Elementor. So, different talaga siya sa Webflow and the other no-code tool. Like, the second one is yung Framer. So, I think cheaper lang siya sa Webflow pero the same pa rin. And I guess Framer is para siyang parang hinahabol na rin niya si Webflow eh sa pag- pagdating sa mga features and all and marami nagkasabi na mas madali siya compared sa Webflow pero framework kasi medyo hindi ko pa siya nagagamit mabuti unlike Webflow Webflow is actually promising talaga pag-aralan kasi maraming high paying clients na gumagamit na rin ng Webflow and if you're going to learn Webflow, of course, mas marami kang magiging client. And target talaga ng natin when it comes to Webflow is yung mga, of course, yung mga high-end companies, high-end clients talaga. And kung hindi mo naman kailangan ng mga articles, may mga articles or e-commerce, pwede ka na rin sa pinaka-cheaper um, plan nila ng Webflow kasi pwede mong, I think pwede mong i-export talaga yung, um, yung code and you can migrate those code into your client hosting. So, nakita na akong ganyan. And actually, nagawa ko rin siya before. So, it's a one-pager lang talaga. 
So, ayun. I'm talking about Webflow and then naging framer ng Webflow. So, another great tool is Wix Studio. Wix Studio is coming from Wix. And I think dati, it's Editor X. Pero, nag-rebrand talaga sila and naging Wix Studio na. So, yun, talagang as in drag and drop builder na hindi, unlike Webflow na para siyang um, nag para kung nagko-code in visual lang, in visual yung webflow kaya sinasabi nila na may learning curve pa rin talaga, especially kung nasanay ka talaga sa mga drag and drop builder. So si Wix Studio is as in drag and drop talaga siya na you can drag the, the that asset or that element or that um, section and on any sides and response maging responsive pa rin siya so promising rin siyang Wix si Wix Studio and siguro i guess in the coming um days the coming months ka pwede ko rin pag-aralan si Wix Studio para at least ma-try ko rin and how uh, it would be easier for me and um, mas okay ba siya sa mga clients ko another one is Bubble so Bubble is more of an app development um, tool. So, hindi ko pa siya totally nagagamit. Pero, I've heard from uh, the followers and yung mga fina-follow ko rin si Instagram. So, Bubble daw is a great app uh, development um, tool because it's easier rin. Para, parang nag- nag-create na rin ng um, website. Pero yun nga, meron pa rin uh, cons like, syempre, app yan, syempre, diba? So, mas parang mas maselan and mas tricky pa rin siya. So, I'm not sure if Bubble is really that promising to learn and to develop that app. Pero siguro yung mga startup companies na kailangan ng mga yung mga hindi masyadong complicated apps. So, I think they can start with um, Bubble. So, aside from Bubble, meron pa rin two apps, two app development tool na no-code tool like Flutterflow and also si Bravo Studio. So, Flutterflow, medyo hindi ako familiar sa kanya. Pero yun nga, upon um, searching, upon my research, uh, before, of course, before ko mas sabihin sa inyo or i-recommend sa inyo, of course, nag-research muna tayo. Sabi nila, is okay pa rin daw yung tool na ito, especially si Bravo Studio. Kasi meron na siyang um, integration kay Figma. So guys, maybe you're wondering na uh, bakit hindi ko sinama si Elementor, um, si Oxygen, yung mga builder. Kasi it's uh, it's under WordPress pa rin. WordPress is a um, CMS like Squarespace and Shopify. So hindi sila yung mga no-code um, builder talaga. Kasi pag sinayang mga no-code tool or no-code um, builder, so may sarili na silang... Um, hosting. So, sila Elementor yan. Mga page builders kasi sila under WordPress. Okay? So, another question that pops um, last time is, can you convert rin ba yung mga design from Figma directly to those uh, no-code tools? So, ngayon, ang dami ng AI tools, di ba? So, ang dami na nag-release. Like, Figma to Webflow, meron na rin silang um, plug-in sa Figma na directly na i-convert. Basta dapat organize pa rin yung, of course, yung frames mo, yung framing mo, yung sections and all. And then, de- meron na rin Figma to Framer. So, yun, nag-release na rin sila. And, kung gusto mo talaga na, kung hindi ka gagamit ng Um, f- ng Webflow and ng Framer, meron na ring directly na Figma to HTML. So, hindi ko pa na-explore yung Figma to HTML but upon um, looking before, parang mag-grab ka lang yata ng plan nila para ma- um, para ma-post or ma-publish na directly talaga without using any of those um, website like yun nga yung Webflow and then si Framer. And then, alam nyo ba na last weeks ago lang, nag-release na si Fig, nag-release si Element and I'm sure not Elementor pala pero one of the companies nag-release ng Figma to Elementor I think marami nag-aantay ng ganong plug-in kasi of course Figma kasi is in eh, talaga yung an, um, gamit natin sa pag-create diba? sa pag-design and marami pa rin gumagamit ng WordPress and si Elementor so good thing na this company Um, create that plug-in. So, merong mga tutorials na rin. Uh, I think 
there are there are creators na rin na nagpost dito sa YouTube ng tutorial on how you can convert that Figma that your Figma design to Elementor. So maybe I I will explore more of that kasi ngayon yung mga freelance clients ko is naka-host trend. I mean uh, yung platform is WordPress and Elementor then so might as well try that plugin and maybe I can share uh, one of these days. Okay guys, so again, I just want to emphasize na coding is like an additional skill set para sa ating mga designers. So again, it's not required but it's going to be helpful in us in our career especially if we're, we're going to uh, be hired on a big company. Like ko sinasabi to sa mga followers ko, especially on TikTok, as long as the design is functional, you solve the client's problem or the company's problem when creating that product or product which mean the website or an app, then these tools are just going to be tools. So at the end of the day, importante pa rin talaga yung result kung na-solve mo lahat talaga ng problem na yon in importante yung problem solving skills diba so kahit ang daya mong ginamit na tools tools pa rin yan at the end of the day so guys i hope you learned something new uh, to this video and again you know the drill if you like this video like and subscribe for more upcoming helpful videos regarding website and being a ux and ui designer so again this is france and see you on the next one bye bye